Hey, Ryan from AccuTune Off-Road here, and today we're going to talk about piston valving and different performance curves that you might experience in your shocks. And so uh, we're going to start here with the graph, just explain how everything works. So this is your typical force versus velocity graph that we'll look at with shock absorbers. Um, so it gets stiffer, goes faster, and then I've laid out some general guidelines here of where you might expect a small bump or handling. So kind of this velocity here represents, uh, you know, going around a corner or maybe hitting some washboard road. Um, this graph here, this line, this velocity is a medium sized bump. So let's say that's like hitting a, hitting a speed bump in a parking lot, maybe like 15, 20 miles an hour. And then finally over here, we have a large bump. So that would be like a square edge bump or hitting the whoops or something like that. So the three main types of valving that you're gonna see in off-road shocks are linear. And so that's a straight line here, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the next most common is gonna be digressive. You see that in a lot of Bilstein shocks, Icon, and then some private brand manufacturers use digressive as well. Um, so digressive, you get a lot more low speed load uh, compared to linear, and then it sort of blows off as you go faster. And then finally, we have progressive shocks, which are like a bypass shock and some manufacturers will tune their shocks to be progressive nature. And uh, you can see it, it's got a lot, very low, low speed load, and then it gains a lot of load very quickly. And so let's walk through real quick what the benefits of each one of these are. So right here, we can see a digressive piston. So if handling is one of your primary concerns, you're going on a digressive piston because you're getting a lot of load down here at low speed. And so when you go around that corner, you're gonna gain a lot of control. It's gonna be firm. Um, a linear piston is gonna sort of be your baseline. And that's gonna have a, a good consistent response. And then progressive is gonna have really poor handling, but it's gonna feel uh, like a Cadillac, just really, really smooth. Um, and then next, a medium sized bump. So again, digressive is making a little bit more force. Um, maybe not a whole lot more. Um, and obviously it depends a little bit on tuning and the graph as you can see is not all that representative. Um, and progressive still is gonna be pretty soft. Uh, that's why you often see them in bypass shocks is so that we get a firmer zone if we're kind of hitting this type of stuff because it'll blow through the travel and we need that stiffer zone to, to make up for being so soft down here. And then finally on a, a large bump, uh, the digressive tends to blow off load. It might actually be softer uh, and then linear, your typical response, and then progressive. Again, it depends on how it's tuned. A lot of times you'd actually expect this to graph to lay down a lot more and, uh, and be stiffer at a lot higher out. So this could be softer or stiffer just depending on how it's tuned. Um, so the big disadvantage that we see to digressive shocks is kind of, if you're hitting small and medium stuff, it's gonna feel real firm. Um, but if you really start getting into big bumps, and really pushing your suspension to the limit, what'll happen is that it'll feel control, 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 no control. You sort of lose lack of control and you're also paying the price down here on handling. Um, as much as handling is important for a lot of people, we really believe that the sway bar should be doing the handling and letting the shocks do the ride quality. So we're not a huge fan of digressive valving. Uh, I spent the first few years of my career working with digressive pistons and figuring out how to make them behave more linearly to improve ride quality. Um, so linear is sort of the gold standard uh, that we shoot for, especially if you have just a straight single shock or just a coilover. Um, we really like to see linear. And then finally, if we've got an internal bypass or an external bypass shock, then we start to bring in a progressive damping curve. So you get that really nice ride quality down here and you can still hit the big bumps. And then the, the position sensitivity will actually bump you up into a linear or a digressive curve as you start to bottom out. So on an external bypass shock, your curve will actually go from progressive and you start closing off tubes, you go to linear, and then finally when you're the bump zone, it's actually digressive. And so uh, you can kind of see here why external bypass shocks are the best, but if you're buying coilovers for your you know, daily driver, for your uh, Tacoma, or for your rock crawler, pre-runner, you're gonna wanna get a linear piston because it sort of has the, the best benefits where you're not trading off you know, this comfort for bottoming out at low speed, or you're not trading off this really poor performance on washboard. And uh, 
And then if, if you get the suspension done and you want a little bit firmer handling, we recommend playing with a sway bar and really let the sway bar do the handling portion and let the shocks do the, uh, the ride quality. So uh, that concludes the first step of our uh, piston tech article. And we're gonna move on to a second stage here. We're gonna talk about exactly how these pistons work and, and uh, show you the nitty gritty details of all the different ways the manufacturers make pistons behave this way. Because just because you have a digressive piston doesn't mean you have digressive performance. So keep watching and check us out on Facebook and Instagram, AccuTune Off-Road.